How you doing? I'm Kenneth, and I'm the Lone Dice Guy. Thanks so much for tuning in to my solo Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Adventures as Ming Zhao, a monk of the Order of the Dragon. He and Jem Levesque are exploring an ancient burial mound they found in the middle of the mountains, and today, it's on to the third floor. Let's get to it. Okay, so when we last left off, Jem and Ming have been going through this burial mound that they found in the middle of the mountains. Remember, we're trying to close a thread. Uh, a couple episodes ago, we got the uh, random event to close a thread whenever we rolled chaos at the beginning of the scene. And so now they've gone to they've, they've gone further into the mountains. Ming is uh, learning survival skills, just basic survival skills from uh, Jem, and she's basically teaching them and they find this ancient cemetery some secret cemetery in the middle of the mountains we don't really know what it's there for yet and so now they have they've found the undead and they're pretty sure that this is the source that the undead have come from they're they're they're, they're pretty 80 percent 90 percent sure and so now they've they found a burial mound they've dealt with a couple of traps and other sort of stuff and they've actually had some very tense conversations Jem knows more about the undead than she's letting on and Ming is in, in, very, very unsure about what to do about that and he tried broaching the subject twice and he got shut down hard both times and on top of that Ming has we've seen that Ming found a, kind of like an enclave of altars to several different deities and one of them was the dragon that founded Ming's order and it's confused it, Ming is confused as to why that symbol why that that altar especially to his his order's dragon is here you know what, what's the connection here he's confused about that but I'm sure we'll learn about that later in the future but now as we are closing a thread, they've gone through the first and second floors, and now it's time to go to the third floor. Now remember, I've already, I've already generated the dungeon, but I've left the, a lot of stuff on the third floor up to chance. And maybe in a future episode, I'll go through my uh, process and how I generate dungeons and things like that. But for, suffice it to say, for today, you know, th we're coming up to the end. Now, as always, it's the beginning of a scene, and so today's scene setup is actually pretty simple. After a tense few conversations on the second floor, Ming and Jem head to the third and final floor of the burial mound. Now, of course, that's pretty simple, but the thing that makes it more complex is that we've added a thread now. Remember, we're in the process of closing out the thread to find the source of the undead. That's what we're doing right now. We're learning basic survival skills, survival skills with Jem. We're also kind of curious about what does Jem know about the undead and what does that have to do with connect to her, maybe even her backstory. But then we've added this, that why is the Order of the Dragon symbol in the burial mound? What is it doing there? Why, is, why, do, why are people worshipping the dragon that found in Ming's Order? These are all questions and threads that we're going to be going over. Now, last time our Chaos Factor was Chaos Factor 6, and... Things were not totally out of control, but they also weren't, you know, things weren't, things were not going Ming's way. I mean, Jem shut him down pretty hard. So we're actually going to keep things pretty at, at so things are not really going to change. Not too chaotic, not too much. Going to stay at chaos rank six. And so, remember, first thing we do whenever we start a scene, roll a d10 against chaos. If it's five or, sorry, six or less, it changes, seven or higher, it's the, it, our scene plays out like we think it should. All right, we got a six. So that means that it is changing. And because it's an even number, it's an interrupt scene. So we've got to roll our random event table, roll our event focus. So we've got a 75. That is a PC positive. Okay, cool. Fine. About time something good happened. Jeez. All right, so then our meaning inform and our subject inform anger. Inform anger. Hey, right, I got it. I got it. I think that as Ming and Jem go to the third floor, we're going to learn something here about the anger that Jem is showing about her past, right? Um, we're going to learn a little, maybe maybe something really important, maybe some kind of revelation. Because um, it says inform anger, I'm interpreting is that we're going to learn something about what's going on. But before we just jump into that, I think we need to th uh, ask the fate chart a couple questions. Um, so based on what we've rolled, we know, we know that we're closing, the, we're learning about the source of the undead here. We're learning about 
um, that, that in this, this, whatever is about to happen, it's going to inform us about anger. And I'm interpreting that to mean informing us about Jem's anger. We're going to learn something. Now, I think that whoever or whatever is causing the source of the undead is in this next room. And I think it's connected to Jem somehow. Right? So, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that, so I'm going to roll the fate chart. I think it's very likely that this is connected to Gem in some way. So is it, but is it? I, I, I could be wrong. Is it connected to Gem? I think it's very, very likely. So that's a 39, and so that's going to be a yes, all right? And so it is, so it is connected to Gem. So it is connected to Gem. Um, so here's what I'm going to wonder now. Is it, a, is it a family member, right? I'm thinking just basic fantasy tropes, right? The the character has the family members involved. Okay. So is the is a family member of Jem's in this next room? And for the record, I have not even teased out her backstory yet, so I'm doing that right now, live with you guys. Alright, so uh fate chart, I uh I don't know, fifty fifty. What did you do fifty fifty? I don't think there's any I don't have any inclination yes or no. Alright, so that's forty seven. And that's going to be a yes. So yes, this is a family member. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll a d6. No. I'm going to roll a d4. So one is going to be a parent. Two is going to be a sibling. Three is going to be like an extended family member, like cousin or aunt or uncle. And four is going to be a grandparent. So, so one parent, two sibling, three extended family member, four grandparent two a sibling huh all right um d6 evens it's a brother odds it's a sister five it's a sister okay so it's a sister and i'll do it again same thing d6 evens it's going to be oh sorry one and two is going to be older three and four is going to be same age three and four is going to be twins and then uh, four, five and six is going to be younger. Five and six, so a younger sister. Huh. A younger sister. Okay. Here's the thing is happening. I think that Jem uh, comes from maybe a family of undead hunters. Like, that's their job. Their job is to go out into the world and hunt undead. Vampires and mummies and, and, and zombies and all the, you know, ghosts and all these other undead monstrosities. That's their job. They're, they're kind of like Belmonts. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm picturing, like, Belmonts from, like, the Castlevania series. And so their job is to go out and to kill all these things. But I'm thinking that maybe Jem's younger sister doesn't really want, didn't really want to take part in the family business. Yeah. Maybe, even, maybe even beyond that, maybe, maybe beyond that, maybe she didn't just want to not take part in the family business, she wanted to do the opposite. Maybe she had a, a talent and a desire to get into, into necromancy. Okay, so we got a black sheep of the family kind of thing. All right. Maybe, ooh, Maybe this, yeah, let's do this. Um, fate chart, is this like her, her lab? Is this where she's been practicing her necromantic uh, uh, skills? I, I think that's likely. Yeah, I think it's likely. That's a 29, so that's going to be a yes. It is, so this is... So this is Jem's younger sister's like necromantic laboratory. This is when she's this is where she has been practicing her skills, her ability to raise undead and create these monstrosities. And I think I think the reason Jem noticed and recognized the the glyphs and the wards that were carved into the ground on the first floor um I think she, I think that's like she recognized it is because those wards were like d maybe designed by her family to to keep the undead out. Th yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Like they were designed to like maybe subjugate or even or even turn the undead. And that when activated, they could be a kind of a a defense system. 
And so she knows that only her family, like, like has created those wards. Or only know her family knows how to make those wards. And so that's why she became instantly, like, so defensive. Okay, okay, this is starting to come together. I'm, I'm starting to, the pieces are all coming together. It makes total sense now. All right. Makes total sense why Jem was so defensive in the first place. She knows that someone from her family is here. She might even know it's her little sister. Does she? That's a good question. Fate chart. Does she know or it's, it's her little sister? I'm going to say somewhat likely. I think she's put two and two together, but still, somewhat likely. 59 is a yes. So, yeah, she knows. Like, she knows that she's the moment she saw the glyphs, she knew exactly what was going on. I can imagine the more she, she felt mortified. Well, yeah. All right. So this makes total sense. So we've got, and we now know why she's angry. So this is definitely a PC positive. This is bringing us closer to a step of what, you know, Jen knows versus what Ming knows. And this is good. Okay. So. Ming and Jem are walking up the steps. Ming is still feeling a little, a little coward after Jem kind of basically told her, you know, sh told him, shut the hell up or I'm going to kick you out. <laughs> um, and so now they're going up the stairs to the third floor. And so I've already generated this. Remember, this is all pre-done. And so when they get up to the top floor, the kind of the landing at the top floor in front of them is going to be a sh very short hallway, maybe like not even 15, 20 uh, feet long. And in front of them, there's going to be a set of doors. And these doors are going to look relatively you know solid but they're already going to be opened okay, they're already open in fact they look like they've been blasted open uh from the go, going in so th they've been blasted out away from ming and jim whoever came into this place first they've got the whole place com they, they've finally got the doors open yeah, but it doesn't look like it's happened recently like whoever's uh, jim's sister who's taken over this place essentially um Looks like she did that a long time ago. She's not really caring about keeping this place up. It looks like this is just a playground for her to practice her necromantic skills. So, um, before we go forward, though, we need to know more about Jim's sister. Um, we need to know more about her personality. And so, let's go to the fate. Let's go to the 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 chart for the uh, meaning and subject. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll a couple words to kind of get us a a sense of her personality. So, our first word, disrupt. And the next word, disrupt energy, pursue. And our last word, a path. Disrupt energy, pursue a path. Hmm. So I think that she's someone that um, she knows she's going against her family's kind of uh, uh, profession. <laughs> she knows she's going against her family's wishes. And I think this may even make her her family's enemy. And so she is pursuing a path down the chromancy and going this way. Um, and she's disrupting energy. Well, I think I think she's going to be kind of the kind of person who doesn't care if it goes against the grain. She's going to do whatever she wants to do. And if she knows that she believes uh, in what she's doing, so she doesn't care if it's right or wrong. Who, you know, who cares about that? It's all about getting the results. It's all about, for her, maybe even learning more in her research and learning how to create and then, and blah, blah, blah. All right. So I'm getting more of a, I'm getting almost, like a, almost like a mad scientist kind of vibe uh, from this. So disrupt energy, pursue a path. She has a goal. Right? Well, that's my takeaway from that is that she has a goal. Maybe we, we can tease that out later. But now I've got a, a better understanding of who she is and what she's trying to do. So Ming and Jim kind of go up there. And Jim quickly grabs Ming's shoulders and just goes to, to signify, hey, it's time to be quiet. Um, so we're going to have both of them roll stealth checks. 14, right? And then Ming's going to roll. So 14 for Jim and 13. So, okay. That's good. That's good. Well, yeah, that's good enough to get them close to the door. They didn't step on like any, you know, cracks or anything. They didn't step on any um, broken shards of, of the door or whatever. So they, all is well. All is good. They're going to get close to the door, and that's when they're going to see inside a large altar. 
on the very far side of the room. Uh, in the middle of the room is this long, long almost hall-like uh, room. Uh, to the left of that, there is going to be some more uh, sarcophagi lined up on the wall, as more as well as more like resting places for people cut into the sides of the wall. On the far left hand side, there's going to be the same thing, more cut-ins in the wall, and then of course at the very far left, there is a large sarcophagus, much larger than any of the others that they've seen so far. But at the Directly across from Ming and Jem, there's going to be what looks to be some kind of uh, pedestal. And on this pedestal, there's going to be something that they can't see from this angle because standing in front of it, raising her hands, is going to be a person, which we know to be Jem's sister, in a black robe, raising her hand with purple necromantic you know, magic kind of you know, emanating from her hands as bones around her, bones around her feet kind of lift for a second and then go back down and lift for a second and then go back down. She's completely absorbed into her ritual. To the right, though, now, whenever I design, whenever I design, whenever I generate the dungeon for the boss for the dungeon, <laughs> uh, I le I'm leaving it up to chance. I'm leaving it up to the generation. So, I've got a d6. And what I roll determines the kind of creature that, the, that, I'm, that I'm essentially going to have to... That could, I may, might possibly, never know. Maybe not have to fight, but still. It's going to be a creature that's not fun. So, roll a d6. And there's different kinds of creatures, right? So, what do we got? A four. All right. It's not undead. <laughs> uh, and so a four is... A four is a construct. I don't know what that means. Anyway, all right. I don't know what that means, but we'll look at it in a second. So to the, to the right, when they look over, they see some kind of like lodestone kind of thing. Some, some, some kind of, uh, of stone. Whenever I generated it, I don't know what it meant. And now I'm, I think I'm putting two and two together now. But still... So, some kind of stone, and so we gotta figure out what we're gonna do. Ming is going to, you know, look at Jem and go. And Ming, and Jem's gonna look back. Yeah, she's not gonna have any of it. And so here's the question: Will what are we gonna, what are we gonna do? I think. I think that Ming is gonna want to talk to this person. He's not very smart. I don't know what Jem's going to want to do. So here's my question. Fate chart. Will Jem be okay with talking to this person? Or is she, is she going to be a shoot first, ask questions later kind of person? So is Jem going to be okay talking to this? I don't really know. 50-50. That's going to be a 25. That's going to be a yes. So she's okay. She's, she's fine with talking to this person. Uh, of course, she doesn't want to attack her sister directly i think she's more than happy to let ming talk so at that point Ming's going to just walk into the room and he's only going to get about maybe 10 feet in before he's uh, before she the the light in her hands goes out and she just without turning around who are you what do you want um my name is ming zhao of the order of the dragon I, I, I just want to talk. I, me and my companion have been trying to find the source of undead that have lately been going through the, the countryside. And we want to make, ask if this is the place that the undead have come from. Without turning around, it depends. I've raised a lot of undead here. I never sent them out, though. What do they do after that? That's up to them. So you did raise the undead. Affirmative. Of course I did. I'm trying to learn how to do it better. Though, still, lot, still, have, a lot to, still have a lot to learn. At this point, she ra raises her hands and puts, it, puts her hands on the altar. Is that all you want to talk about? No. Um, my companion here... Uh, look. You need to stop. You won't... 
The undead caused the death of someone very close to me. And I'll be perfectly honest, I want to strike you down right now because of that. Why are you doing this? At that point, she's going to st kind of stand up a little bit straighter and turn around. And of course, she's going to look at this. What Ming doesn't know is that Jem is now kind of behind him. She's not like standing next to him. She's actually walked up behind Ming and is kind of crouching a little bit lower. No, Trauma's trying to hide herself a little bit. She's not doing a very good job. She turns around and Ming can clearly tell it's another half-elf. Her skin looks very pale and almost sickly looking. Her eyes are really deep and sunken in like someone who's, who's read a little too long. You know what I mean? They've been reading a little too long. And on top of that, her clothes look all you know, raggedy and kind of, she probably hasn't taken, she probably stinks. She's not close enough to tell. Like, this girl is not having a good day. She's seriously, and she's had a lot of, she's, she's having troubles. <sighs> look, who is that behind you? Oh, this. And he, Ming kind of steps to the way, and Jim quickly steps, you know, behind him. What are you doing? Stop it. What are you doing? Stop. And so Jem's kind of like very uncharacteristic of her. Um, I think I'm gonna, I think that by this point I'm gonna see does uh, the the necromancer notice that it's Jem? Um, somewhat likely. Twenty nine, which is a yes. So at this point, the necromancer is like doing this motion, following Jem as she kind of tries to draw the way, and her eyes get really big. Big sis, big sis, is that you? Are you here? Did grandfather send you? Who sent you? Monk, are you working with them? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I have no idea what's going on here. Someone please fill me in. What does she mean by big sis? <sighs> Jim steps to the side. <sighs> That's my little sister. Your little, your little, you can, don't look so surprised. Little sister, I would, I wish I could say it's good to see you, but it's not. So, you finally came for me, huh? Hmm. So what are we going to do? Are we going to fight it out here? You know, I can't fight. You know, I'm not good at that. So you're just going to kill me? I don't want to. You know I don't want to. All right, at this point, we need to figure some more stuff out about their backstories. Um, in my head, I'm thinking that maybe, maybe, maybe Jem has a soft... Remember, because we talked about how whenever uh, Ming was begging her, please help me figure this out, and that kind of tugged the heartstring, I, I wonder... Did me? Did, does Jem have a soft spot for for her little sister, right? Maybe maybe her sister also at one point begged her and, and that led her to do something. So, I think it's unlikely. I think it's unlikely she has a soft spot. So let's roll. Testing six. I think it's unlikely. Sixty eight, which is a no. No, she does not have a soft spot for her little sister. She's not. So whatever little tug on, on, the, on the heartstrings she felt earlier is something totally different. Um, so if she doesn't have a soft spot for her little sister, maybe it's the exact opposite. Maybe she's the one that, that, like, this, that is so against her dabbling in the, in the, in the chronancy. I wonder if they're, mm, mm, okay, okay. I wonder if it's not just that she's the one that really hates the fact that she's doing this. I wonder if the, the relationship between them has always been bad. So let's ask that. Um, again, I think it's unlikely. I think at one point they had to have been, well, it's just their sisters, right? At one point they had to have been close. But still, uh, Faye Chart, it, it, you know, did they at least at one point become, were they close at one point? Unlikely. 51. 
<laughs> that's right above a no. That's right above a no. So no, they've always been in each other's throats since the very beginning. They've never, they've never seen eye to eye. All right. Listen, sister. Big sis. Why don't we just cut the crap? Why don't you just let me go? <laughs> you know I can't beat you in combat. There's no reason for you to be here. Now I think, I think she's stalling. I think she's stalling. She's trying to get a spell off. Ooh, is she a sorcerer? Ooh, yeah, let's see. Uh, Fae Charge, she's a sorcerer. I think it's somewhat likely. I think it's somewhat likely. Uh, 90. Yes, yes, she is 90. Okay, so she's, a, she's like a necromantic sorcerer. That's interesting. So she's trying to get uh, her her sister's they kind of stall while she does a, a spell in the background because sorcerers have meta magic and they're awesome. So I think she's trying to subtle spell some kind of of something later. Maybe a oh I know what's going on. I know what's going on. Remember we have to find the the. the Okay, so I know you're probably thinking, wait, when did we decide we were summoning an elemental? Um, so I thought my camera had recorded this. It didn't. I don't know what happened to the footage. But anyway, um, I did roll uh, to determine what kind of construct would be summoned. And so things on the list included golems, elementals, of course, gargoyles, animate objects. Um, I think I had a couple like different like angels and archons and things like that in there and stuff that just weren't uh, things that, that things that are kind of put together by different elemental and magical forces. Uh, and so obviously not like living, living creatures. And so elemental was the one I rolled. So I'm sorry. I thought I had already, I thought it was in the footage. It wasn't, I don't know what happened to it, but yeah. So that's how we got elemental. Anyway, back to it. The, the monster we said we're going to fight is an elemental. I think she's subtle spell, subtle casting a summon elemental spell. Let me look that up for a sec, real quick. So I think that she is going to be summoning a fire. Oh, actually, no. Let's do this. Uh, one the D four, one air, two earth, three fire, four water. She's got the ingredients for all that stuff here in the burial mound. Burning incense in a burial mound, of course. Soft clay or earth. Yeah, it's a burial mound. She's got earth everywhere. Sulfur and phosphorus for fire. A lot of uh, embalming fluid involves sulfur and other things like that. And water and, uh, and sand, of course. She's, again, everywhere out of the place. So she has all the ingredients. It's just a matter of which one we're going to choose. So, again, one air, two earth, three fire, four water. Three. <laughs> Come on. A fire elemental it is. All right. So she's talking, and... She well, you know, while her hands are kind of obscured by her robes, she's slowly reaching in and grabbing a little bit, uh, a little bit of phosphorus, a little bit of uh, sulfur powder that she's using, that she's going to be using. And so she's doing the spell, you know, without having to do somatic or verbal components because she's a sorcerer. And so she's about to summon elemental. So, sis. Uh, yeah, so sis, you know you don't want to fight me. I, I can't fight. You don't want to kill me. I'm your little sister. Just let me go. Okay? I promise. I won't do this here anymore. I'll leave this place. I'll never return. I'll never come back. You don't have to worry about the undead anymore, young monk. They will not be coming from this place anymore. No more people shall die in wherever little hole you crawled out of from. Hey, that's not the point. That's not the point. You shouldn't have done it in the first place. What do you... What do you think I'm here for? To make myself feel better? I'm here to stop you. You need to be handed over to the authorities or someone. I don't know. Justice has to be served. I mean, kind of fondles with the ring a little bit on his, on his finger. Someone I loved died. You don't get to just... Act like you'll just walk out of here because you said you wanted to. I'm done talking. So at this point, Mings pretty much starts walking towards her. I wonder if Jem... Where's the question? It's been... How long has it been since Jem and her saw each other? That's a good question. 
How long has it been since Jem and and her sister saw each other? Based on Jem's age, she's not very much younger than 24 to maybe 25. Uh, I wonder, let's do a D12. Right? Actually, no. Let's do a D6. So how many years has it been since her and um, her little sister have seen each other? Five. Right? So it's been five years since they've seen each other. And that means that, and so we'll say D4, how much, how much younger is her little sister? One year. So only one year younger. Okay. Okay, so she's about 22, 23 years old. Jim's about 24, 25. And so, but it's been five years since they've seen each other. So they were both teenagers when they saw each other last. And so I wonder, fate chart, is she going to sense that She's summoning elemental. Is that something that Jem can sense? Um, I, I want to roll, actually, an, an insight check. Or no, perception check. Yeah, I'm sorry, perception check. We'll do 10 uh, plus the, the level of the spell is a fifth level spell, so 5. Um, so 15 is going to be the DC. <laughs> she rolled a 2. Okay, so she... Jem doesn't know. Jem is so distracted by the fact of, oh my gosh, it's her sister. She's kind of reeling now. All of her confirmations that they've had since climbing up the into the burial mound is confirmed. And so now it's it's not even a matter of uh, of not paying attention. She's just, boom, boom, maybe her, be her heart's beating really fast. The fear effect aura is still kind of getting to her. She just misses it. She just misses it. Ming... I don't think he knows what to look for. So even if he did notice something, he wouldn't. Um, but yeah, so he's, a, he's no magic. He's not a he's not a mage. He's not a wizard. So she's gonna. I think she's gonna succeed in some of your spells. So as they're continuing, Ming starts to walk forward. He he, he takes a, a step forward, and she kind of opens. She her eyes get wide. Oh no 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 no! Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Why? You, you look pretty frail and weak yourself. I'm, 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 I'm coming to restrain you. Please don't fight. <sighs> Sis, it was good to see you again. I hope the next time isn't so hostile. So at that point, she's finished all the stuff. Somatic, sorry, because of subtle spell, she doesn't have to do the somatic stuff, so she... That she feels the uh, the little bit of sulfur in her hand kind of dissipate and disappear as it's consumed by the magic. To the right of Ming and Jem, the the stone starts to starts to pulse. In fact, it's the same it's the same pulsing sound they heard before. And so they look over really quick. Eyes get really wide as. It's almost, it's almost like a heartbeat. And so that's when, you know, her, um, Jing, Jing, Jem's little sister, that's when Jem's little sister starts to kind of laugh. <laughs> almost like a witch. Think like a witch. I'm, I'm imagining a witch in my head right now. I think I'm going to make her a witch. But still. So you, <laughs> she's so excited. And she can, you know, magic is leaving her and going into the stone. And then the next thing that Ming and they're, again, they're totally taking this by surprise. The stone catches on fire. <sighs> the, shoot, flame, the jet of flame shoots off the top of it. And then suddenly <sighs> forms, uh, the, the flames form around uh, 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 the, the, the stone called the stone lodestone there. And it solidify into a form. And both Ming and Jammer eyes are super wide at this point. An elemental showed up, a fire elemental. And so at this point, she says the one verbal command that will that she believes is all she has to say. She says, kill them both! Turn them to ashes. And at this point, I think combat is starting. But we've had a long session at this point. We've generated, we've learned a lot about. What's going on? We've learned a lot about Jem's uh, family, his kind of family history, about this character as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw up the stuff for her in a moment, make her like, flesh her out a bit. 
But yeah, so we've we've learned all this other cool stuff about her. I think this is a good place to end for here. So next time, a little cliffhanger there. The fight's gonna start with the fire elemental. We're gonna see if we can get Jem's little sister restrained before she can get out and escape. I mean, who knows? We'll see what we can do. All right, so thanks so much for watching this episode. Again, please, if you're doing your own games, put them in the put them in the comments below. I would love to see what you're doing. I love watching things like this. I'm really enjoying Trevor Duvall's series, Me, Myself, and Die. Please check out his channel. It's in the link to this video and also in the channel description. There's also some tools that I use in the description as, in the description as well that you can use to help benefit your game. Please keep in mind that, again, I'm pretty much ripping off everything that Trevor Duvall was doing. I'm not doing really anything original. I'm just putting my own story and my own spin on it. So please check out his channel. His production values are better. His, his voices are better. He's just a funner guy. I think you'll enjoy his stuff way more than mine. But I hope you'll stick around for me, too. I'm enjoying this. Whether you are or not, I am. And so please stick around for more. Like and subscribe to this video. Share it if you want. I hope that you'll stick around for even more adventures of Ming Zhao as he tries to complete his training. Next time, we're getting into combat, baby. All right, that's all for now. Thanks so much. Have a good day. I'm Kenneth, the Lone Dice Guy. God bless.